third year bsc btech btech yes sir okay which institute sir delhi technology okay Good. so it is now meeting is on and stream then also youtube okay so so you you are watching through youtube or you are watching through zoom so we are on zoom okay that's fine so this is we are doing for our backup so later if uh, students get benefit if they, they are free they can you know watch later videos and oh, this right. is on official site of honeybee network so oh no good that's that's good so um i think we will not going to uh, wait for now and i'm taking this opportunity to uh, you know give a brief introduction so i'll take your half a minute with your yeah. yeah so uh, <clears throat> students we have with us uh, uh, dr dibashish nai who is associate professor at iit indore and uh, if i talk about his research interest then he is um, interested in viral nanotechnology vesicular stomatitis virus glycoprotein glaze <coughs> based virus like particles platform for targeted drug delivery viral vector vaccines uh, recommended uh, bsv based multivalent vaccine development emerging viral infection of the cns <coughs> immunopathogenesis of <coughs> encephalitis and meningitis uh, meningitis uh, caused by emerging neuroviruses <clears throat> and uh, he is uh, you know a passer from tamil nadu veterinary and animal science uh, university uh, and uh, during the master he uh, studied in animal husbandry extension uh, during uh, 1999 to 2001 and uh, he uh, did his phd from university of nebraska lincoln um on molecular biology and viral pathogenesis <clears throat> he has working experience more than 20 years now in the research field and in academia uh, so this is very brief profile there are lots of uh, papers on his name on the reputed international national journal and i am not going to uh, you know waste his uh, precious time behind the introduction there is lot more to add into his profile uh, so uh, on behalf of shristi very warm welcome sir delighted to have you uh, over to you sir uh thank you mega that's a wonderful uh, opportunity for me and uh, very kind for your introduction so uh, can you able to see the screen uh, in case uh, i miss something uh, can you able to see the powerpoint slide yes sir it's visible okay uh, so uh, yes uh, it's a wonderful opportunity because this is the platform we need our youngsters to to know what is happening around you means in inside your country and what is uh, you know happening outside the country which is the, across the globe and where your authority or your involvement or your dedication is required to you know make our country a beautiful as well as disease free country so i will go through you very um, you know slowly as well as you know giving very fundamental insights and uh, i understand that uh, your background set diverse and most of you have not taken dedicated virology course in your undergraduates or btech program so far but in case you have any concern or questions or anything is not so clear to you uh, i will i know happy to answer your all queries and questions so please feel free to you know ask questions uh, just uh, like a, a day you know regular interaction i will be happy to do that okay so i am going to talk about viral vector vaccines okay so then i have to define you what is viral vector what is vaccines then i will compose or propose to you that what is possible and what is being done in currently with examples as well as you know very specific relation to the coronavirus what we are doing okay so uh, for the sake of the academic presentation i have uh, divided this uh, topic into four chapters okay each chapters contain about roughly 10 to 12 slides and in this i will try to tell you that how a vaccine works okay what are the you know way we need to consider to design a viral vector vaccine okay what are the you no know, 
common viral factors are available and what are the success stories and what is ongoing within our laboratory as well as in the other part of the world regarding this virus viral vector or virus vaccines okay so let us go to know what is the basic things a vaccines need to be work what you tell that a b c d points is they are checked or they are they are available we can tell that vaccine is success so coming to the you know background we have to tell you that the whole world is waiting for coronavirus vaccines and in some of the countries for example in united kingdom which is great britain in united states of america usa in in china in russia there are different forms of the vaccines have been rolled out including in india also okay so the all all world is wants that some form of the corona uh, prevention strategy should come quickly so that the pandemic situation which is you know you know making this entire world economy hostage will be relieved and this is a moment where we need to understand or we need we have you know like appreciation that how the entire global community is working in very cohesively manner together so that a meaningful solution can come out okay so in this uh, you know uh, trial what i wanted to know you that when you call a vaccines okay so it's a best defense against viruses so i am talking the vaccine in the context of viruses so vaccines can be also defense against bacteria pathogens such as salmonella typhi or type typhoid or you know in salmonella or, or e coli so more more importantly vaccines are something which is dealing with against disease causing pathogens the pathogens could be bacteria viruses fungus and prions so these are the three four forms of the uh, you know pathogens which are exist who cause the majority of the infectious disease but in our context when i talk about vaccines my intention is uh, to have a understanding around the viruses so let us assume vaccines means virus vaccines okay what vaccine is done that two things in important things it does one is mobilize the host immune system to block the virus infection okay so so that means we have everything inside our system but we are not tuned to fight against that virus the analogy is that you know if i do not be political but you you need to know that there is a current stand up between the you know line of actual control in ladakh okay so there is a foreign country which is attack you know trying to invade our nation and indian government or our country main is mobilizing resources to block that thing to happen that means we are trying to send our troops in the front line we are trying to make a air sea, air base or even for the lake we are also picking the boats from the navy to you know patrol that you know ladakh lake so that exact meaning is called mobilization of our resources that means we have everything but they are now focused to a particular point of attraction the same strategy we are using vaccine to produce that effect inside the host so that the necessary elements which are present inside the body is now being getting attracted and mobilized to raise a level of you know defense strategy or defense uh, state so that you can block the virus infection or you can defend it okay so another strategy is that by doing this we are so this is this is happening inside the host it happened within you and me but at the population level what is happening that if i am dependent or i am strong then i will not pass the corona virus to my neighbor or to my family okay so that means the chain of transmission which is happening from one person to others that exactly the corona is going so the vaccine is you know stopping that chain reaction it is somehow uh, you know breaking that chain reaction so that the spread of disease is not going to occur in a population so at the individual level we need to see the rage in the status of your immune system as a population level they break in the transmission chain so these are the two minimum requirement for a vaccine to succeed so the entire focus of the global community is that how can we block this or we can you know, stop the chain reaction happen so that the once the people get vaccinated they are not supposed to transmit the disease to others so as a result the automatically the natural cycle will go away as well as the people will get out of the pandemic situation so these are the two different strategy of a vaccines so what is happening in your host so i am going down to you know um, you know inside the host as you as as we are telling we are mobilizing the immune resources so here we are uh, arming ourselves with some of the sentinels or some of the fighter cells which are very distinct 
as well as very specific in choosing a particular virus and attacking the you know, viruses and eliminating the virus from the host. So who are the fighters here? So here we have two major fighters. One is your B cells as well as the T cells. And all of you know what is B cells, which is the antibody producing cell. And also you know the T cells, which is the effector cell, which can also uh, release some of the very strong cytokines or, or, or cell produced molecules who is very detrimental to the virus replication. So these are like interferon gamma, TNF alpha, IL-6. So these are some kind of toxic proteins which is secreted so that the virus harboring cells or the cells which are now supporting virus replication will be deleted or dead or eliminated. So these are the two major way the B cells and T cells are trying to you know, combat the situation. But that's not enough. What we are achieving is that by providing the vaccine as you know as a education uh, strategy because we are educating your immune system so that you learn those things that means in the long run we are making a memory response we call it immune memory so that is the achievement of a vaccine that it should produce the immune memory immune memory means in future if the same virus will come your body will quickly fight it and eliminate it so that is the requirement and what is happening, so as I am telling you that there are two aspects. One is within the host, within the person or within the individual and in the population level. So by doing that, what we are achieving is that herd immunity. Okay. So herd immunity is that collective you know, immune you know, defense of a population. Out of 100 people, how many people are defended? Uh, how many people are strong enough to repeat or uh, repeal the virus infection? So that is called the herd immunity. If the majority population are, you know, immune or we are, are you know strong enough then automatically we block the disease transmission chain so that is the two aspects of a vaccine immune memory and herd immunity okay so if either of one is missing then we cannot eliminate pandemic okay if you are strong but none of your friends or family member are strong then also same thing so you, you have to be strong enough so also your neighbor and community or school teacher or your classmates are enough persons traveling the train, bus, aeroplane, must be also having immunity. So that is called herd immunity. Okay. So current uh, situation demands that we should achieve these two things. Okay. So in other way, people also take talk, the vaccines are anti-infection medicines. So different people have different, you know, uh, way of, you know, looking at it. What uh, we are, you know, telling you that if you look at the x-axis, uh, which is your you know, 1840s is the, our time period to 2040. Uh, here is Y axis, which is the life expectancy. So around 1840, the average person who was born in the globe was supposed to die at the age of 48 or 49. So as, and that is the, that is the where we introduced the anti-rabies vaccines. And so also we introduced the yellow fever vaccine. And slowly, slowly each dot or triangle represents a country where the uh, you know, use of vaccines has improved the life expectancy. So as a result now, globally, we can say that more or less everybody is now expected to live between somewhere around 70 to 90 years of age because the diseases which are causing death are almost all gone, particularly the, you know, uh, the high mortality disease. Okay. I, I have to tell you one aspect also. So there is a term we call morbidity and mortality. So morbidity means that in a population, if a disease is coming, how many people are getting affected? And mortality means that among those affected people, how many people are going to die? For example, in case of coronavirus, the morbidity is high up to 99%. So if almost all everybody will be infected if coronavirus is given to them. But the mortality is somewhere between one to 3% or 4%. That means three, one to three people or maybe one people in India out of 100 will die. Okay, so that is the mortality rate. And in case of Ebola, this mortality rate is about 20 per people. In case of chickenpox, or it is zero. Nobody dies in chickenpox. In case of smallpox, that is 30 people. In case of you know rabies, it is 100%. Okay. So rabies is the only virus which kills 100% if vaccine is not provided. Okay. So these are the two terminology in, in medical science we use mortality as well as morbidity. So lower the mortality. If the disease is you know getting low, people don't care. Okay. And similarly, lower the morbidity, people don't care. But what is happening in the corona is that the morbidity is very high. Everybody will be infected. Okay. 
So as a result, there is a scare among the people and also death is happening indiscriminately. Like any age, any group is susceptible to the you know, death. So that's the reason why the entire globe is now hostage of this particular virus. So not the cell that what I'm trying to tell you that as we progressed in finding solution to the vaccines such as polio vaccine, smallpox vaccine, hepatitis B vaccine, you know, uh, you know, cervical cancer vaccine, uh, influenza vaccine, all these vaccines enrollment or each vaccine produce a better chance to live further in life. So as a result, we have increased, you know, life expectancy across the globe. So here is an another way to look at it that, so if you remember the 1918, we had the last pandemic, which was the Spanish flu. So this is an influenza virus, which was making havoc in the globe, including in India. So there are millions, uh, roughly five crore people died and mostly strong people, those are soldiers. So 1918, there was World War II, and in, during that time, there was a break. So we can see that how immediately the life expectancy, which are running around 55 to 56, 60 years, dropped down to below 50, just because of one pandemic. Okay. So there was no solution, there was no vaccines available. So as a result, the average global you know, population uh, life expectancy reduced, and slowly it is improved. So now uh, pandemic is no more, the influenza pandemic is no more, we have certain uh, efficacy as vaccines available. So the death rate has gone down and nobody is worried about influenza anymore. Okay. But the same situation is now happening with the corona. Okay. So you'll see that graph, the, the, the life expectancy will also slightly lower down because of the corona is killing people. Okay. So, so this is the attribute or this is the contribution of a vaccine to, to our modern society. Okay. And now, you have to go a little more, you know, in a political way to look at that. What is that response of a vaccine to the host immediately? Okay. So here I am plotting the, you know, response uh, in terms of time versus a measure of, you know, response, which is called antibody response, which is coming from your B cells. Similarly, effector T cell response, which is your CMI, which is called cell mediated immunity. Okay. So. Hopefully you understand what is difference between T cell immunity versus B cell immunity. Or more or less, one is the fighter cell, which is your T cell. Other is that fighter molecule secreting cells, which is your antibody secreting cell, which is your B cell. So both work same target, but in different. One fights directly, one uses you know, so, such as a missile to kill it. Okay, so that is the two different way I can analyze. So what happened when you inject okay a vaccine? Uh, to, to a person. So immediately we see a spike in your antibody as a T cell response. And that after some time, okay, so that uh, level or quantity of those you know, antibodies and T cell will wane down or, or you know, go down over the time. That is the nature of our, our system. So, so then if you give another dose, okay, so then again there is a spike. Okay. So, so basically what we are trying to tell you is that, so the body reacts quickly whether it maintains or not, that is the question. So in some cases, the maintenance is for lifelong, for example, in case of polio viruses. Some cases, the maintenance is about one year, for example, in case of influenza virus. The problem is that in coronavirus, we don't know how long this protective immunity or maintained antibody T cells will be there inside the human host, because this is virus is only one year old. And only recently, last three months, four months, we have this clinical trial going on. So to know the exact data, we need to wait for at least two years, at least two years to know the exact way how the protective immunity is there or not. But what is happening that because there is a spike in this antibody, we can immediately reduce the mortality or morbidity rate because immediately within 15 days or maybe in, in two to three months, the pandemic will be over if you vaccinate to every people. So once the pandemic is over, then we look for in you know, the long-term, short-term solutions. But currently, only a, you know there is no alternate to vaccines. So we have to use the corona vaccine to reduce the pandemic level, which is global level, to an epidemic or exotic level. That means local lights. For example, in our country, we have chikungunya, uh, we have dengue, we have Zika, Zika viruses, we have Japanese encephalitis viruses, but they are not pandemic. They occur in a very specific time or place and they stay there and they live there. Although there are some people die, but it's not a major concern. Nobody's worried about, you know, going in the train or a flight or, you know, going to the school or colleges. Okay. So the current global community effort is that at least we need to wipe the pandemic to an endemic stage by use of this, you know, 
uh, body's response, which is fast exposure response. So the moment you give the vaccines, immediately there is a protection. That will stay for weeks at least, or months. And if we are lucky, it will be stay for years, depending on the what kind of response we are getting, because we don't know so far. Okay. So that is that is the you know way we are looking at it. So here is an you know uh, analogical way which I am trying to show you that uh, in case of you know a person which is infected, okay, uh, if he is transmitting the virus to another person, which is not in which is not having immune protection or not vaccinated, then the person will you know pick the infection from him. But if this person is vaccinated, even this person transmits the disease, this person will not get the infection. So that means by vaccinating an individual, we are reducing the probability of population spread. So that exactly is your herd immunity. So different viruses uh, require different uh, percentage of the population to be uh, vaccinated. For example, in case of smallpox to be effective, we need to vaccinate you know, at least 80 to 85% of the population. In case of measles, we need to require 93 to 95% population to vaccinate it. In case of polio, we need to vaccinate at least 80%. But in case of corona, as per the model says, somewhere between 60 to 70% vaccination is required to stop this pandemic to an endemic stage. Okay. So what are the factors which requires, or what, what are the keys to success of a vaccine program? The most important factor for a key to successful vaccine program is the appreciation of the vaccines or the cost benefit ratio or risk benefit ratio. Okay. For example, in our country, we eliminated polio last four years before. Polio is globally eradicated, but in Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Sudan, polio is not eradicated because the population or the some some uh, individuals in that country believe that vaccine is not going to you know help uh, in eradicating disease rather it will cause some problem to the human population particularly you know production of babies and all so the people did not appreciate the vaccine okay so the first important thing that a vaccine is there but you have to you will be willing to take it even if you're not willing to take it if i offer also five vaccines nothing will you know help in eradicating the disease so the first thing is that the personal characteristics social norms, knowledge, what is your experience with the previous vaccines? Okay. Has anybody died in the past of smallpox? Not at all. Have you seen any polio patients recently? No, because these are 100% you know, effective vaccines. They are very, very strong you know, eradicating diseases. But people have persistence. There are, there are different uh, you know, uh, groups. Uh, there is always information as well as mis misinformation is going around. So vaccine cause some people tell that vaccine cause, uh, for example, you know, schizophrenia. Some people tell vaccine cause autism. So these are all, you know, unnecessarily, you know, undesired, you know, information which is being populated in the social media and all. As a result, there are certain people, certain country are not accepting the vaccine. So, so for that, you need to be knowledgeable. You need to be knowing what is the exact truth of science behind the vaccine. Why it would work? Why it will not work? Okay. So remember that. No vaccine is 100% effective. Okay, so what we are looking is that the percentage of a population to be protected so that the disease will be wiped out. So vaccine is to prevent disease. Remember, vaccine is to prevent disease. Vaccine is not to prevent infection. You understand? So even I take coronavirus, I may be infected, but I will not be diseased. Okay. Uh, so so that is the that is the you know take home message I was to tell you that vaccine is to prevent disease. You may be infected, but you are not disease. In a given amount of time, anybody of us will have at least five to 10 virus infection. It may be herpes virus, it may be E. coli in your pathogen as a bacteria, there may be salmonella, there may be staphylococcus aureus in your skin, there may be some kind of, you know, uh, hepatitis delta virus in the gut. There are n number of pathogens will be always with you. You cannot prevent it, okay? But what you can prevent is that you will not get sick, okay? Let the virus go and come. We don't care as long as you are healthy. So the main purpose of vaccine is to how to prevent the disease. And you may be infected. It is better to be not infected, but you may be infected, but that's not going to make any problem because infection is a part parcel of our life. Unless you're infected, your education of your memory system or as well as the you know, immune system will not work properly. To, to educate your you know, immune system, you need to be challenged with a vaccine or by a mild infection so that 
your memory response, your T cell development, B cell development, thymus development is also required. So, so this is this is how we we talk about vaccines. So now the vaccines are now integral part of our existence. What do you mean by integral part is that vaccines are now administered to the animals, okay, cattle, you know, chicken, cow, pig, bat, even farm fish, which is some some of the uh, you know salmonella, sorry, salmon fish or you know, tuna fish or pamphlet fish, which are very costly fish. People are also using vaccines to prevent disease. Okay. In addition to you know child, so as, as a as a child, our country have a very generous vaccine program. So which is you know taken care by polio administration. Then we have measles, mumps, rubella, sometimes chickenpox. So now you know coronavirus is another program which is coming. So so every all of us have gone through a vaccine program in our past. And when you were a kid, your parents might have taken or your school teacher also might have suggested for vaccines. So starting from your childhood to now, the vaccine is becoming part of our life. Not only our part of life, also the part of life of horse, donkey, cat, camel, you know, chicken, cow, pig, everything. So, so that's why I'm trying to tell you that the vaccine is now an integral part of our existence. If you do not take vaccines, likely that the life expectancy, which is shown that we'll expect to live around 70 years, maybe 30 years or 40 years, we'll go back to 200 years before what was the status. So that's why for our existence, we need to have vaccines. So now I'll give you an insight view of a vaccines. So there are two terminologies uh, used you know, frequently, and you, you must know what are the terminology. One is antigen, okay? one is immunogen. So antigen means something which is recognized as a foreign. Okay? It is not of your origin. It is antigenic, not genic to you. Okay. So what, what immunogen is that a molecules which can elicit the production of a very specific antibody response. Okay. So that means anything is foreign is called antigen, but antigen not necessarily produce a immune response. Okay. So, so to be immune response to be specifically produced, we have to design that, you know, antigen such a way that it becomes immunogen. Okay. So immunogen means a vaccine in, in a way not cell. Antigen means a virus. So there is a difference between virus and a vaccine. So which you, I will also explain you in future, but for a not cell, the, the, the products which are being marketed as a vaccines are the immunogens. Okay. The raw materials are the antigens. Okay. So that, that's your not cell. So now I think this is the you know, first part of our you know, work. I'm just to finish you with uh, two examples that how does this uh, immune, say, in immunity stay and how we are acquiring it. So there are two ways we are acquiring it. One is called active immunity, one is passive immunity. In case of active immunity, we are actively engaged by a pathogen or a vaccine. Okay? So that means they are stimulating your immune response by within you. Okay? So that is called active immunity, such as natural infection and vaccination. Okay, but in passive immunity, so you are not doing it, but you are passed. Like for example, somebody gifted you a car, you did not buy it, but still you own a car. It's the same thing. So when you are in the womb, your mother passed IgG, which is your immunoglobin G, through your placenta, through the placenta, so that you acquired some degree of protection when you were birth. So if you remember that. When you are breastfed or when the baby is breastfed, they consistently get IgA, IgG through you know, blood and milk so that they remain protected. So usually coronavirus does not affect that badly to the kids which are you know, fed by mother with the breast milk. The other way to you know, acquire the immunity through passive way is that you collect immunoglobin from me and inject to somebody else. So where is the immunoglobin is located? Inside your blood. Which part of the blood? Inside your plasma, which is the non-cellular component of your blood. So you collect those plasma or so-called you know serum and you know store it and whenever you need it you inject to the others okay so that is the way we are providing the artificial way to boost a passive immunity so passive immunity is not long lasting it will be a transient way okay so i will tell you my experience in this passive immunity that currently you know that you know coronavirus is you know infecting people and many people are recovered from the coronaviruses so what means that those people are recovered of the coronaviruses, we call convalescent persons or convalescent you know, donors or convalescent patients. That means in their serum, 
there is enough antibodies available which is protective against coronavirus because these people have successfully overcome the coronavirus challenge. So now if you collect those plasma uh, antibodies from a donor which is overcome the corona, you can inject to another person which is already in the middle of the disease. So in that situation, you boost the immunity so that the recovery phase of the person which is currently undergoing the corona will be quicker. So this concept is well established since last 100 years and, and based on, because here you don't have to worry because you are not translating or transmitting any blood cell. So you don't have to worry about, you know, antigen O, A, B, C, because you are not transmitting the blood. What you are transmitting is the part of the blood which is liquid having no cells, that is the antibody component. So this strategy is now going on and there are many, you know, at least a dozen of places in our country, the government has permitted the medical institutes such as all Indian Institute of Medical Science and other high reputed institutes to collect the plasma donors, store it in the fridge, and whenever there is a need, a person is going bad through the coronavirus, they are permitted to use this as a treatment aspects. Okay, so that is how the plasma uh, is being used as a therapeutic option. So, what uh, important is that? How does this plasma is going to, you know, give a protection? So, I'm going very specific to the coronavirus. So, in the left side. I'm showing you a cartoon, which is the coronavirus looks like. For example, coronavirus, we know spike protein. Everybody in the world is know that what is spike protein. It is a protein which is outside the coronavirus, you know, system, which is an envelope or envelope that has a, you know, ray kind of appearance. So the name spike means that is something like your kind of thorn. Okay. So this is a particular protein, which is required by the virus to bind to a receptor because virus cannot enter as is. It has to bind to a receptor. So in, in case of human being and in case of certain animals, this receptor is AC2, okay, which, is, which, is, which is a cellular receptor. And the coronavirus spike protein binds to the AC2 and enters to the body and does the infection. What if you provide an antibody which will block this binding? So that is the holy grail about the monoclonal antibody. So monoclonal antibody is a very small, uh, specific, narrow portion of your protein or the antigen or virus is recognized about 10 to 12 amino acids is recognized by the antibody and it binds there by binding to the virus the virus is not able to enter to the host so that is the very specific way you can eliminate the virus condition so if you follow the u.s election uh, last uh, january november first week when donald trump was you know infected with coronavirus there was a company called Illilili who are producing the monoclonal antibody against coronavirus, they give the you know, doses to Donald Trump and he recovered. So what essentially is that? So you are providing a situation that there is a competition of virus between the cell. The competition is that how quickly virus go and bind. And, and you are providing a block that look, I am providing the antibody, the antibody is going to the bind the virus, thereby will block binding to the host cell. So in that exactly principle, the Nimitli, the, the central CSIR, okay, a scientific and uh, you know, Council of Scientific and Industrial Research has funded us. Us means uh, we are three people, uh, NCCS Pune, Bharat Biotech, uh, as you know, they are working on the co-vaccine, as well as IIT Indra, which is part. So we are generating neutralizing human monoclonal antibody against sars coronavirus for a therapeutic strategy to contain, contain the COVID-19 you know, pandemic. So here essentially what we are doing is the exactly the same thing, but in a different way. So what we have done is so far that we identified in, in around April, March and April, 50 people who recovered from the corona uh, in infection. So these are people we collected from Armed Force Medical College in Pune. So we, we collected the blood from these people, donor, uh, okay, with all, all you know, necessary paperwork and whatever consents. So from the blood, we isolated the B cells. So we know that the B cells are the antibody producing cells. Okay. So if you isolate the B cell, so you are isolating the antibody producing cells. So the B cells can produce different type of antibody, but one B cell will produce one specific antibody. So in a given situation, our body can produce thousands types of antibody, but out of the thousand types, only four or five are neutralizing antibody. So what I want to again emphasize you that so here, you know, in the in the green color, is the domain of a protein. So this protein is a three-dimensional mm -hmm. structure. Okay, the receptor is also three-dimensional structure. 
but a specific part of the protein is binding. If your antibody is only blocking to that part, then it will stop the virus infection. If your antibody is binding here or here or here, it will not block the infection. But in your body, body will not, you know, you know, it will not make very specific antibody to that. It will make antibody for everything. But our technology, we need to find out the which type of antibody is blocking the infection, so-called neutralizing the virus. So what we have done is that we have identified a very specific number of B cells, five or six, okay? And those are producing antibodies who can neutralize the virus. So now we, we got only five, six cells, then how can we make the entire you know, antibody for the population? So what we have done that, if you go back to your molecular dogma of biology, molecular biology, that a DNA will produce an mRNA and mRNA will produce protein. So antibody is a protein, agreed? So that means there must be some mRNA, right? If there is mRNA, there must be some DNA. So what we went back to reverse way is that we found the mRNA, which is producing those antibodies in the B cell. And then we went one step back that we can found the DNA sequence of those you know, antibody producing B cells. So now we clone that DNA sequence from B cells and put in the ordinary cell. So it is a called recombinant biotechnology approach. Okay? I think there are two to three groups in India who is currently doing this kind of work. Our group is one such group who is doing this particular work. So now from a person which recovered B cell, we collected millions of B cells, we only find five, six B cells. And from that five, six B cells, we, we clone the DNA part and put in other cell and expanded that cell to millions and billions in the lab. So now we have milligrams, grams, you know, of uh, antibodies. Now this is going on the phase one clinical trial by Bharat Biotech. So hope that in future, our country or us will have a option to treat the disease. Okay, this is not a vaccine. This is the treatment because vaccine only work only when it prevents. But if somebody is already infected, we have to use this option only. Okay, so that is one aspect of your work. So now I need to, you know, conclude this part of the work telling that what types of vaccines are available. Okay, so with the examples. Okay, so vaccines can be immunogen. So immunogen means it will induce the specific immune response. So we have to look to the virus that what part of the virus is immunogen. And in case of coronavirus, I think only protein you know is so far spike protein, but there are 17 types of protein in the coronaviruses. Nucleocapsid protein, uh, polymerase, uh, furin protease, and, you know, then matrix protein, then S1, S2, all variety of proteins are there. Any question? Okay. So yes, but only spike protein is inducing the immunogens. Okay. So if you target the spike protein, you can make a vaccine. Okay. But Beyond that, there are many strategies that are being used in the entire world to produce vaccines. For example, some people are using the virus, they grow it, they kill it by chemical or by UV, so that the virus is no more deadly, no more dangerous, and you use the dead virus used as a vaccine. Okay, that is your classic example is your, you know, uh, uh, rabies vaccine. Some people use the DNA, as I told you that. DNA can be RNA, RNA can be protein, Okay. that can be also antigen, so that is also vaccine. Similarly, RNA can make protein, so that means RNA can be a vaccine. So there are different peptides can be vaccine, there are conjugates of vaccine, there are so many ways, but I'm just giving you an example. So here I'm trying to show you one vaccine which is being currently being developed, and I'm also partially working in that project, it's called Covaxin. So Covaxin is a brand name of Bharat Biotech, which is producing the inactivated or killed virus, just they are growing the virus, and they're killing it by chemicals and they're clearing the chemicals by its different wash procedure and they're packaging using as a vaccine. Okay. So you must have heard about Moderna vaccines. Moderna is a company in USA, what they're using the mRNA. Okay. So they're using the mRNA to produce the spike protein inside the host and that protein become immunogenic. Okay. Similarly, you might have heard about, you know, uh, Oxford, uh, uh, you know, which is called Chadox vaccine. Okay, so I, I'll explain you about that, which is your Serum Institute of uh, India, which is in Pune, they are working. That is a viral vector vaccine. Okay, so Pfizer BioNet, which now we received, that is also RNA vaccine. Similarly, you know, uh, the Sputnik V, which is a Russian vaccine, which is Gamalia vaccine, that is also a viral vector vaccine. So in the current market, we have two viral vaccines, vector vaccines, I will explain you later, and two RNA vaccines which has been approved by 
Federal Drug Administration of USA. Okay, US FDA is the very stringy agency which go for any detail to uh, you know allow somebody to do vaccination. So when US FDA approves, many other countries also approves independently. For example, United Kingdom also approved this Oxford vaccine as well as the Moderna vaccine. Our country has approved Sputnik vaccine, Moderna vaccine, uh, sorry Pfizer vaccine, and Chadox vaccine, which is Oxford vaccine. We have not accepted the Moderna vaccine yet. So different countries will have different. I'm just borrowing this slide from you know uh, BBC to tell you that what state of the vaccines are in already rolled out and what are the temperature requirement, what are the probably cost and all these things. Okay. So if you look at this Oxford vaccine, okay, top one, it cost very cheap, not cheap in the sense that compared to others. Okay. But the mRNA vaccine is by Moderna, it is very costly, which is roughly around two to three thousand rupees. But here it can get in 150 to 200 rupees. Okay. Similarly, different population combination are there. But the Bharat Biotech, you know, Covaxin, I believe it is coming around 150 rupees. So that is also further cheaper. Okay. So this is uh, this is the current status of the different types of vaccines based on the formulation which I explained about here. That you know, genome can be used, mRNA can be used, DNA can be used, part of the virus can be used, whole virus can be used. So like that, we can design vaccines, different formulations based on the current scenario. So this is not self uh, in this. So here I am stopping the first part. So if you have any questions from the first part, we can discuss. Otherwise, we'll go to the next step. Hello, sir. I am yes. Supnil from Pune, yeah. Maharashtra. Okay. Sir, how will you decide that it is 90% effective, 95% effective? What is the re reason behind that? Uh, uh, so how I will decide if a vaccine is 95% effective? Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So what we do that we do four types of trials. One is called preclinical trials in the animals, particularly in, in this situation, monkeys. Then phase one trial, which we do few dozens of people, phase two trial, couple of thousand people, and phase three trial, around 30,000 people. Okay. So in three steps, we collect the data that a population is vaccinated. Suppose 30,000 people are vaccinated. Okay in a trial, okay, which is ongoing now. And 30 trial people been given just distilled water. That means nothing, okay. So there is, but they will not be told in the beginning. We call it a blindfold, okay. We'll tell that you are getting something which may be vaccine, which may not be the vaccine. After some time, after three months, we'll look at the population that out of that 30,000 who got vaccine, how many got disease? And out of the 30,000 who got the placebo or distilled water, how many got disease? Okay. So combining that statistical parameters, we arrive at conclusion that this vaccine is 70% effective, 80% effective, 90% effective like that. So this is based on the statistics. Hello, sir. Excuse me. This is stages, sir. Uh, we are now phase three clinical trial where the population is more than 10 to 30,000 uh, people or even more, depending on the uh, size of the trial. Hello, sir. Yes, uh, uh, I'm Tejas. So yeah. as you said, uh, one of the approach of developing vaccine is uh, by growing uh, um, a virus and uh, making it kill by yeah. uh, using chemicals uh, and mm -hmm. again uh, providing it to patients. What yeah. I am asking is uh, uh, the, a patient who is already mm -hmm. infected by the virus and uh, who is cured, mm -hmm. if uh, again infected with the virus mm -hmm. will be will he be cured without uh, taking any vaccines uh, theoretically yes and in practically also 99% is correct okay but but there is a, another situation we called antibody mediated enhancement okay so i'll explain you briefly okay and give you analogy so in india dengue virus comes every year okay right so dengue dengue virus has four brothers and sisters we call dengue 1, dengue 2, dengue 3, dengue 4. Okay. So any virus infection will produce antibody. Suppose dengue 1, no, dengue 1 is infected and your body produced antibody for the dengue 1. Okay. So, but when next year, suppose you another virus called dengue 2 is coming to you. What happened? The antibody is going to bind it. Okay, because that is the nature. The antibody is going to bind it, but it will not neutralize it. That means it will not kill the virus. So in that situation, what happened? When the antibody is bind, the dendritic cell population, which are the antigen-presenting cells of your body, 
they will take the antibody bound virus inside. Okay, so instead of killing, the virus get a chance to grow more. So in that situation, we call antibody mediated enhancement or we call ADE, antibody dependent enhancement. So that situation is worse. Okay, so far we don't know or we do not see any evidence that Corona is doing that one. Okay, chikungunya does not do that one. Polio does not do that one. You know, so-called uh, SARS, sorry, so-called rabies does not do that one, but dengue does do that one. Western virus do, does that one. Um, your Zika virus does that one. So, so we have to be carefully optimistic that coronavirus does not do that thing so that in future, if somebody is infected, they will get rid of that one. Okay. But if that, that uh, antibody dependent enhancement is happening for the disease, then we have to radically design the vaccines in different way. Okay. It will take some time. For example, our laboratory has, has, uh, has applied for a patent that how if the situation arises future, then how we can uh, make an approach to make a very specific antibody uh, or vaccine which will not make this antibody dependent enhancement effect. Okay. So not necessarily to your question that all virus behave same, that not necessarily becomes that if a person is infected, he will not get the disease. Not necessarily true that if the person get vaccine also will not get you know uh, infection. So there is a possibilities, but possibilities are very low. And as the data comes, as the globe, global population migrates through the pandemics, more information will come. So far, the virus is only for one year. So we don't know much about it. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir? Yes. Uh, sir, we have read about, in our immunology classes, we have read about adjuvants. Mm -hmm. So uh, instead of two doses, like mm -hmm. two or three doses that we are, give, uh, we are proposing as of now for vaccines, can't we use adjuvants as something that would uh, slowly... Uh, giving us the uh, vaccine see the adjuvants is something like you know booster okay like enhances okay okay so for example in you, suppose i get a vaccine okay i i want to achieve that 1 billion b cells should be activated okay that, that for a scenario to a successful vaccine i need to active 1 billion b cells but in fact i am able to make 10 million Understand the point? And in that situation, adjuvant will help us to make 10 million to 1 billion. Okay. So for a very specific moment of you know, injection, the adjuvant will boost the immediate response. But it will not, it will not guarantee that the immune response which is now 1 billion will remain as 1 billion. Okay. To do the to that, we may need, we may need a multiple exposure, maybe after 14 days, maybe after three months, depending on the virus. For example, if you remember the childhood, you have taken MMR vaccine, measles, mumps, rubella. Okay. Yes, Sometimes also you needed booster dose. Sometimes you have taken hepatitis B vaccine and you need to take a booster dose because adjuvant will only enhance that particular time, but it will not guarantee the longevity of that response. That depends on the kind of virus formulation, nature of your immune response, state, which you are, you are young, you're old, or you are juvenile, depend many status. Okay. So it, that's why it is safer to give a booster dose than depending on the adjuvant because we don't want to take any chance. So are we using but, any adjuvants in any vaccines that we are as of now proposing? So typically when the virus is dead, we are using the adjuvant. Okay. But as per the current scenario, the virus, uh, you know, the vaccines which are two, one is Chadox or Serum Institute of India, that is an adenovirus vector vaccine. Sputnik is an adenovirus based vaccine. So the virus replicates inside the body for a certain amount of time and they keep producing the spike protein. So for that, we don't need, you know, adjuvant. But for other two formulation, for example, Bharat Biotech formulation, they're using, uh, you know, IL-6, uh, CPG DNA or beta lactal propion or PPL as an adjuvant to, to boost the immune response. So depending on the formulations. Okay, sir, thank you. Yeah, if the virus is not live, we must need an adjuvant. If the virus is live, then it will replicate, it will create a mini, mini, mini disease situation which is controlled. So in that situation, we do not need to boost it. Sir, also, uh, I have one more question. Mm -hmm. uh, sir, I have read that uh, the, depend, the vaccine, uh, what you can say that uh, the mode of uh, injection of the vaccine will depend, that is depend that determines that uh, how long the vaccine will uh, will be effective in our system. So uh, is that true? Partially correct. Okay. For example, 
you take polio virus vaccine how you eat it or drink it right it is given as a oral drop okay right yes sir but you, when you take pox vaccine you are given in the injection okay so why there, there is two way because polio virus grows inside the intestine sars corona virus loves to grow in the lungs epithelial cells hepatitis b virus loves to grow inside the liver okay so we need to understand that where the natural target organ of a particular disease or virus is okay if you mismatch then you will reduce or increase the disease condition or also immune response so that's why it is it's necessary to know that what is the root of particular infection what are the target organs are and accordingly you have to design your vaccine strategy based on this things so it is not a universal uh, rule you have to go for each virus specific one also sir type of vaccine also uh, determines the yes how long it will be effective in our system yes so the most desirable vaccine is a lower pathogenic virus or a virus which will grow but does not make disease so in the medical term we call it attenuated virus okay the the success of you know polio polio eradication as well as smallpox is because we found a virus which do not cause disease but it replicates for a certain time for months to years so that your immune system get continuously activated and remain a very high alert okay but if you provide a hepatitis b vaccine which is a sub unit vaccine which is just protein then you have to give booster dose by injection and you have to check the titer every couple of years that you are protected or not so that's why you know type of vaccine also requires which route it should go in so if you inject you know um, hepatitis b vaccine through you know oral route it will not do anything it will just pass through your feces or if you inject polio virus to your skin it will not do anything because virus is not growing going to grow in epithelial cells rather it loves to grow inside the you know a, you know intestinal cells so so you have to know the virus biology first okay thank you sir yeah so i think uh, we can uh, we have lot to share but uh, i'm just trying to go to the next uh, stage of uh, consideration of you know engineering of viral vectors so so the virus is a unique organism which has either dna or rna as a genome the rest of the genomes are only dna so this is the only specific organism which has the dna or rna as a genome but there are also some you know ambiguity in some viruses there is dna rna together okay we, we are not discussing that exceptional things in case of corona virus we have a rna virus in case of polio virus it is also rna virus but in case of you know smallpox virus or chickenpox virus so they are their dna viruses so the genetic content is very much important reason being that dna is stable in the environment compared to the rna okay we are lucky that it is corona virus but it could have been a dna virus it could be difficult because we know that corona virus rna virus rna virus are not stable by simply giving you know uv light wiping with you know alcohol or, or you know washing your hand with so you are get rid of the virus okay so that is the most important uh, criteria you have to know so to know what kind of vaccine you have to develop as a vector you need to know what kind of virus it is what kind of genomic content it has okay so there are different versions of the dna the double stranded dna single stranded dna circular dna linear dna similarly rna are also like that plus stranded rna minus stranded rna is so a different kind so these are the considerations which you need to know based on the genome of virus that what we should go for what we look for in a virus vector so viral vector vaccine means one virus is used to develop or vaccine against other virus so in a not cell we are we are put, we are keeping the for example in case of corona virus spike protein is enough to produce immune response what if out of 17 protein of corona virus we pick only spike protein and put in another virus that became your virus vector and that is exactly done in chadox okay which is your your adenovirus which is your you know uh, serum institute of india is doing in pune okay so what we need to look at the virus or the vector is that it should not cause disease non pathogenic it should replicate protective immune response it should produce it should tolerate the gene of interest or tolerate means that you are cloning the spike protein of corona virus to another virus what if it throws it out so it should be stable okay it should be limited in host strength and other things which is related to cost 
these are the desirable property of the a particular viral vector this subject is very complex so i am trying to you know simplify as possible okay and because of time we are we are trying to cut short second thing that uh, there are certain advantages to this virus vector okay uh, there are also disadvantages the most important advantage is that okay so this is a attenuated live form of virus that means it mimics natural infection so so far so far we know that most cases 99.9 cases natural infection is the best way to produce the immune response sometimes person dies but the kind of immune response quality of immune response is very good in case of natural infection so using the virus vector we are trying to mimic that natural infection environment inside the host while not causing the disease so that is the most advantage okay what are the disadvantage is that we are using one virus to treat other virus okay so what if that you know original virus can you know do mutation becomes more pathogenic there are chances okay so those are the chances and and the chances of other existing immunity and all these things are there so these are the two forms of the coin that when you are choosing you have you have to consider the two aspects okay so what you need to know before designing a viral vector vaccines that you need to know the genomic information we need to know which tissue we are going to target and we need to know what appropriate size of corona virus for example we need to clone it so we know that in the appropriate size of the corona virus is spike protein which is roughly around 1700 kilo base or roughly around 535 you know amino acid in size so we know that exactly what is the gene of interest we need to clone we know the target tissue of corona is your you know long or epithelial cells we know the vector is your adenovirus so three things we know now so now we can design the vaccines so i'm not uh, showing you this data i'll show you the later okay so we all know that viral machinery is nothing but collection of two independent unit one is one dimensional information in terms of genome which is a dna or rna and there is three dimensional information of life which is a protein okay so basically a comp compartment of protein is encapsulating a gene inside it and it is called a virus okay so there are two components a genetic component which is nucleic acid and a protein component which is three dimensional structure typically okay <coughs> so how can we use one virus to make a defense against other virus so in other cell how can you use a wild type virus to make a vaccine or, or or a vector vaccine okay so that is the you know question we need to answer it and for that we need to know the exact viral pathology exact mechanism of virus how it replicates inside the host what are the requirements what are the weakness and all these things and once you know then we can make appropriate changes to the virus so now modernly we are using a technology called reverse genetics so reverse genetics means that we are reversing the gene information of virus and, and you know trying to manipulate the genes so like we are making the transgenic animals we are making you know genetic modified organisms or food similarly we can modify the virus depending on the context as as long as you know exactly that what is the virus requirement what is the essentiality what are the luxury what are the disease things so different when the virus is coming spike protein is attaching nucleic acid protein is protecting polymerase is replicating the dna matrix protein is providing a scaffold so we need to know what form of the protein or gene is doing what job and if you know that then you can manipulate it so so based on this information we can make a vaccine by vector as a replication competent or replication incompetent what do we mean by replication competent is that you design in such a way that the it will be independently replicate 1 to 2 2 to 10 to 10 to 1000 okay it will go on but it will not cause disease in other word it is it will go and produce only one round it will not replicate to produce its progeny so that is called replication incompetent okay so why you do that thing because in case of replication competent uh, you know a situation as you told that it will produce a situation of a mimicking the original infection but not cause disease this is the most desirable you know uh, vaccine of modern days that the the adenovirus vaccine which is being sputnik 5 or or the chadox vaccine are the replication competent adenovirus vaccines okay so that if you provide one that will make 2 and 20 and 1000 if it is not replication incompetent then we have to provide 1000 so that is the advantage 
okay of being replication competent and not not competent so i am not going to show you okay i am just going to try to tell you that what are the viral vectors being currently used for for purposes so viral vectors is not only used for vaccines but the main use of viral vector is gene therapy okay okay so gene therapy is the potential repairing way to enhance or replace the non functional gene inside the host so for example we know that type 2 diabetes is insulin dependent and that means your beta lactam cells cannot produce insulin what if i will introduce a gene inside your liver cell which will produce insulin it's a theoretical situation i'm not picking rightly but we can do that by by making a virus which will go to infect the liver cell to not cause the disease rather introduce the gene of insulin inside the liver cell right so that is one of the way we are called at gene therapy so currently there are at least 2000 clinical trials are ongoing in the world on the gene therapy particularly treating the cancers because we know that in case of cancers there is abnormality in the genetic component so that the cells divide divide and divide and there is no arrest mechanism and what if you introduce a rrst signal to the cells by particular virus so that the cancer cell will not grow so we know that there are thousands types of cancers cancer is not a unified or single situation it's not monogenic different variety of situation can produce cancers but at the end the cell divides and grow and the only purpose of virus vector is that how to stop that growth so if you stop the a cell it will not produce b or c or d so that is the way the entire you know population of this gene therapy is targeted primarily using the viral vector similarly the second we are using viral vector as a antigen as a vaccines for example in case of corona virus okay another way of using virus is viral oncotherapy so our laboratory also works on the viral oncotherapy and we produced a very significant piece of information recently that how can you use a particular virus basically cluster modified virus to kill cancer cell while not killing the regular cell so you have to identify what is the difference between cancer cell what is the difference between of a normal cell and how can you make a customized virus to only target the cancer cell and not and not the normal cell or healthy cells so if you can achieve that they can you you can do the oncotherapy now there are three viruses in the world who has accepted by you know medical treatment uh, to use virus to you know you know treat cancer and it is very effective and very cheap okay and and unfortunately none of this kind of uh, work is ongoing in india at a you know, clinical level people are doing some work in the lab level but our country is lagging lot behind even 1% of the clinical trial in, in it's not in india although we have such a vast population okay and in addition to this you know oncotherapy vaccine therapy gene therapy viral vectors also used for lot for research purpose okay so for example the monoclonal antibody work which we are using is based on a virus vector so that we can select the b cells so like that the n number of use of a virus vector okay so what are the common virus vectors one is adenovirus one is adeno associated virus retrovirus lentivirus so i just want to point you two things here one is adenovirus okay uh, which is your current vaccine which is coming to india and retrovirus so imagine that retrovirus you hiv virus two decades before retrovirus was responsible for infection of 75 million people in the globe and nearly 3.5 million people died of hiv in two decades later this virus is used to develop vaccine so this is the modern technology you know this is the you know this is the beauty of research and development okay which is supported by many agencies for example in india we we get department of biotechnology government of india Uh, CSIR, then ICMR. In globally, we are getting from FAO, uh, CDC, Atlanta. So all this global community, Bill Melinda Gates Foundation. So as a vast amount of research, so we have turned down a pandemic virus, which was not pandemic as a epidemic virus such as HIV, to a vaccine candidate now. And nobody is worried about HIV anymore. Although there is no vaccine, but nobody is worried about HIV anymore. Okay. So similarly, there are other viruses, lengthy viruses, uh, adeno associated viruses. i'm not because the time constraint i'm not talking to talk it but i want to going to focus on one thing which is called adenovirus okay so adenovirus is a very big dna virus 
when we talk about big in the sense that if the gene size is more than 10 12 kilo base okay our genome is 3 billion base pair okay we are talking about 10000 base pair okay so you can imagine the how virus is small compared to our genome okay so here the virus size is 36000 base pair so it's a dna viruses okay it has you know um, it has hundreds of genes but fortunately we know that in this adenoviruses, not all the genes are required for virus replication. Okay, so what do you mean by replication? Replication means that it will reproduce another virus from its own, right? It will make a baby virus out of what? That purpose, it needs only 10 things. To make a disease, it may be needed another 10 things. To, to, to block immune response, it may be another 10, 10 genes. Or to enter to the cell, it needs another five genes. To come out of the cell, it needs three genes. So by doing the molecular virology research, people exactly know that out of these hundred genes, which are required for replication, which are required for disease, which are required for prevention of you know immune response, all these things. But if we keep only immediate uh, you know uh, genes which are required for replication and delete everything, it will replicate, but it will not cause disease. It will not come out. It will not block the immune response. So. So we can manipulate the viral gene in such a way that we can make a docile virus from a wild type virus by deleting out the genes. And when you delete something, you have option to add also. Okay. That's a simple way. So what you add here is that spike protein of coronavirus. Okay. So now we deleted many genes of adenoviruses and add the coronavirus spike protein. And what scientists in, in Oxford has done is that okay, they have done okay, this. Uh, COVID-19 vaccine, which is now in phase three clinical trial, that is called CHADOX. Okay, CHADOX means chimpanzee adenovirus Oxford one. Okay, there are different versions. So chimpanzee adenovirus Oxford. These are the nomenclature. So adenovirus infect human beings, chimpanzee. It infects uh, uh, you know mammals like cattle, all these things. The beauty of these things, if chimpanzee adenovirus will go and infect human beings, it will not cause the disease. Or if human adenovirus will go and infect chimpanzee, it will not cause disease. So that means, in, in theoretically, we eliminated the disease itself. We we got a monkey virus, and deleted the genes and put your you know uh, put your you know spike protein in that inside that. So so as a result, we made a vaccine candidate called Chadox one. Okay, Chadox one in scope nineteen. This is the this is the you know so called copyright name of this you know. So it was developed in Oxford. And AstraZeneca was funding that project. And after they developed this thing, the Serum Institute of India, which is in Pune, is in manufacturing in bulk. Because if you remember that, this is a replication competent virus. That means if you put one virus in your cell, in 24 hours, it will make 20,000 virus from that cell. So in, in a given amount of time, in 24 hours, you can multiply 10,000 fold of that virus. So that is the beauty. Okay. But in case of Moderna virus, Moderna vaccine, as well as in case of you know Pfizer and Biotech vaccine, they are mRNA vaccine. They cannot replicate. So you have to prepare and you know dose it and give it. That's why the the price becomes very high because here the the multiplication is infinite. You can produce enough as long as you are providing time. The problem is that we need billions of doses, but we have limited time. But still, this vaccine is coming as a as a gift to the humanity because we can now you know induce immune response very quickly and effectively and you know using this particular uh, situation sputnik 5 is also another uh, vaccine based on adenoviruses so here they are using human adenoviruses but they have deleted any gene which is responsible for disease for the human being so that there is no chance of disease that's why there are some some apprehension that if you if a layman in a scientist world they will prefer go for the British vaccine, which is Oxford vaccine, than the Russian vaccine, because the Russian vaccine is a human virus. So there is somebody may okay, they might might have forgotten, or there is some chance factor. But here there is no chance factor. Okay. So that's why our country and many other countries have showed appreciation or love towards the Chadox vaccine compared to the Sputnik V because of this region. So similarly, we have also another virus we call adeno associated virus. That is also a very small virus. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to talk to you in detail. So beyond adenoviruses, there are another group of viruses we call pox viruses or vaccinia viruses. 
So vaccine of viruses is much bigger. So I was talking about adenovirus around 34 kilobase. Here I'm talking about 190 kilobase. That means it's three to four times, five to six times larger than that. Okay. This is a pox virus. Okay. And it has even much bigger gene size. Okay, so 250 genes. There we have 100 genes, but here it is 250 genes. But the, the beauty of this particular virus is that it is very species specific. For example, if you have a vaccine virus of monkey, it will never ever infect human being. Even if it infect, it will not cause disease. It will never ever cause disease. And that is the exact reason why this smallpox was very successful. Because smallpox was not like coronavirus which is coming from bat. Smallpox was a human virus, it ended in human. Imagine a situation that if some of us could have been stayed in monkey or cattle or dog, you could not find it because it will stay in the wild. That problem was not there with smallpox because it is very species specific. Pox virus is very species specific. So it will not do, that is a naturally evolutional, hundreds of years of you know, research has been also proved that they will not deviate. So as a result, they are very safe. Okay. All you have to modify is that how can you add a spike protein to here? So if you know the reverse engineering or reverse genetics approach, you can modify the vaccine virus to add a spike protein and the virus will go and produce spike protein, but it will not cause disease, but it will induce the immune response against the coronavirus. Okay. So here is some example I don't want to go in detail. Okay. Similarly, we have also another group of viruses. We call it a, you know, herpes viruses. These are also DNA viruses okay, who also cause you know, a lot of you know, vectors in the current scenario. Okay? So I'm not going to talk in detail because of time. Okay? So in summary, what I'm trying to tell you that we have retroviruses, lentiviruses, adenoviruses, adeno-associated viruses, pox viruses, herpes viruses, so many other viruses which, which are being used as a vector. Okay? So now I'm going to my favorite topic, which is the RNA viruses. So far, we are talking about DNA viruses. Okay. So in my work, in my group, we work exclusively one of the viruses called vesicular stomatitis virus. Okay. I need to explain you vesicular stomatitis. So vesicles means kind of a uh, pimple or pox kind of thing. Stomatitis means something outside your mouth. Okay. And virus. The, the virus causes small pustules around the mouth. But that virus is only cause disease in cattle okay, or horse. It will never cause disease in human being. So now the first criteria is taken care that you need to choose a vector which will not cause disease. So, so we choose the vesicular stomatitis virus. Also, this virus has only five genes. Okay. So we talked about adenovirus, which has 30, 90 genes. We talked about vaccine virus, which has 250 genes. But this virus has only five genes. So it's very easy, okay? And, and among these all genes, there's one gene we call glycoprotein or GE gene, okay? So he, it is responsible for causing the disease. It is responsible for spread of the virus. It is responsible for attachment of virus to the new cell. What if we replace or delete that gene, okay? So, and in this situation, we have done exactly that one. Okay. So we have, we have systematically made approach in cloning so that we deleted the gene from this virus so that the virus is now, it will replicate, but it will not spread to the other cell. Okay. And in that situation, what we have done is that we have added our pseudovirus, uh, we have added spike protein to complement that glycoprotein deletion. So that means we have made a hybrid virus of a coronavirus spike protein and Vesicular traumatis virus backbone. So we know that vesicular traumatis virus will not cause disease in, in, in human being. And we know that spike protein will never cause disease in human being because coronavirus needs 17 protein to cause the disease. Only spike protein will not cause the disease. So now we bring two together things and produce a situation, a hybrid virus, we call it pseudovirus. And this particular project is, you know, I need to appreciate uh, Virak who has funded this project to us. Uh, with the help of National Center for Cell Science to produce this hybrid virus in the laboratory and, and try to see whether this, vac this virus can be a vaccine candidate or not. Okay. So we have generated this virus in the laboratory. We have conducted the preclinical studies as, as of now with the NCCS Pune. And our particular, this formulation is producing 
high quality of neutralizing antibody in animal host. So now what you need to do is that test in the human population and we go, you have to go for phase zero one, two, three clinical trial. So, so far this is the not cell that we are in the laboratory. We are using this particular system to produce a pseudo virus, a hybrid virus or non-pathogenic virus, which will be able to induce immune response like a coronavirus, but will not cause disease. Okay. So, so here, you know, this is, you know, this particular project, as I told you, the BT uh, project, which is a biotechnology project by Bayrak. So we have done the animal testing and I ate indoor and it's Pune. And based on that, we have made the candidate vaccine. We have made a platform to screen the drug, ELISA plate, parallel entry research, monoclonal antibody development. Using this particular pathogen, we have achieved many of these, you know, objectives in doing research in coronaviruses. And, and you know, some of the platforms so we are, you know, the National Biopharma Mission, uh, who is also taking interest to take this, our platform to standardize for vaccine testing among the country. So recent, soon we will also hear about how our platform is going to work. Okay. So in conclusion, I need to, you know, focus on time that viral vaccines is a very faster approach and safer approach to do the, you know, vaccine. So imagine a situation that suppose government made a target that each household will have a landline telephone how much time it will take to provide landline telephone across the country. But imagine a situation, the government order, everybody will get cell phone. How quickly it will be? You put a tower and in 40 kilometer range, everybody will have the cell phone signal. But if you have to do landline, you have to provide each connection to the house. So viral vector is, you know, cell phone signal. It is a very faster approach. In three months, Chadax made the vaccine. In four months, we made the candidate vaccine. Uh, uh, China made even faster. Russia made even faster. So this platform allows to make the virus vector possible within a very short time. Earlier vaccine trials were at minimum five years to 10 years. Now within a year, we are seeing the results. So that is the advancement of technology, genomics, informatics. This is helping us to design the virus vaccine subject to, we know the biological properties of the virus, biological properties of the vaccine candidate, biological properties of the vector itself. If you know all three things, we can design it. Because if you handle the coronavirus, we have to handle in the biosafety level three condition. But if you handle the pseudovirus, we can do in the regular lab. So that is the advantage, okay? So we know that the vector platform is tested for phase one. For example, in the past, somebody produced the Ebola vaccine in the, in the adenovirus platform. Now we are using coronavirus in the same platform. So that means the platform is tested. That means phase one trial is gone. We cannot, we don't need to do phase one trial. We can go advance to phase two and phase three. So that is the advantage. Because your platform is same, only you are changing Ebola glycoprotein versus SARS glycoprotein is just spike protein. Okay. So, but other things which have been a little uh, you know, complicated, which is difficult, which is existing immune response and other things. So I don't want to go in detail, but to conclude that we have a technology, we can quickly develop a vaccine for any disease if you know the biology of that disease. Okay. And here in not cell, I'm trying to show you that on the left side, there are type of, you know, the viral vectors are being currently in clinical trial. And unfortunately, nobody is doing in India. And again, I'm telling you, young guys, you come across, we'll help you. You, you go and there is so much things to do with the virus vector beyond vaccine, because we are only talking about vaccine in India, vaccine, vaccine, vaccine. But look at 62% of the virus vector used in cancer research. Monogenic disease, 92.2%. Infectious disease, 8%. Ocular disease, neurological disease, inflammatory disease. These are the use of virus vector. Okay, and who are the virus vector? 22% of the virus vector is your adenovirus, retrovirus, naked plasmid, you now all these things. Okay, so now I'm showing you the you know, you know, scenario that how many way we can use the virus vector and what are the virus vectors can be used for a clinical things. And here I'm just showing you an example that how the US FDA has approved Pfizer to treat a gene related disease, which is called Wilson disease, which we, I don't want to talk in now, but using the virus, we can treat a disease by repairing the genetic you know, information through gene therapy. So that is the beauty of this virus vector beyond vaccines. Okay. So with that, I, I ask your questions. I'm, I'm, I think I'm approaching the time limit. I'm stopping it here. If you have any questions, sir, uh, please go ahead. So the Chadox vaccine that you uh, just showed us, so mm -hmm. its mechanism is just like the, uh, the Edward Jenner's vaccine that first time was proposed. Mm -hmm. No. So Edward Jenner did not use, see in, in, in case of uh, terminology, we got genetic manipulation. 
Okay, so Edward Jenner used um, cowpox virus to immunize human. Okay, so cowpox is different, smallpox is different. Okay, but there is 95% similarity between these two. Okay, unfortunately, the disease causing ability of human smallpox virus is remain in human, but the immunogenetic properties is, is shared between the two viruses, is same. So as a result, the cowpox virus will provide the immune response of the human smallpox virus, but it will not cause the disease. Yes, so it is, it is, but in case of Chadox virus, what we are doing, we deleted genes from the virus and added spike protein. So it is a genetic manipulation. So we are added an extra step to it. Yeah, we added the spike protein of coronavirus to it. Okay. By genetic engineering, yes. But in case of uh, Edward Jenner, it was just naturally occurring, you know, virus from one source is injected to other source. Sir, if it's possible, can you just briefly describe how uh, these virus vectors can be used in cancer treatment also? Uh, so, we know that some virus will go and kill the cell, right? Yes, virus sir. goes, they replicate kill the cell. Okay, so killing is a, is a phenomenon in medical term called apoptosis. That means programmed cell death. Okay, it is not an aberrant cell death. There are different kinds of cell death, but what will happen that the virus, you know, manipulate the host machinery in such a way that the cell dies itself. Okay, so that is called programmed cell death called apoptosis. So every virus has a specific gene which induce that you know condition. In case of VSP, which I was talking, and I, I, I made an article in, in viruses in 2018 about this particular virus, that there is one gene called matrix protein, and the gene size is only about 150 you know, amino acid, very small gene. And if you introduce that gene, that cell will be dying. Simple, okay. The question is that if you can introduce only to the cancer cell, that cell will die. If you, mm. if you introduce mm. the regular cell also, that cell will die. If you restrict the virus only to infect the cancer cell, then you can kill the regulated killer of the cancer cell, okay? Otherwise, virus will kill everything. Wherever the genes goes, it will kill it. But question is that, how can we stop the virus not going to the normal cell, rather going to the cancer cell? So, so what? For that, we need to know a property of virus. This particular vascular stomatitis virus, where I did my PhD, is very sensitive to interferon, okay? So what happened? Interferon, interferon is a you know, antiviral you know, molecule, okay? And that interferon is absent in, in the cancer cell, okay? So suppose I inject you interferon and inject you virus, the virus will not go to the normal cell because normal cells are already interferon stimulated, but the cancer cell lost the ability to be stimulated by interferon. So there a gate is open, okay? So, so in this situation, you inject virus as well as interferon, the interferon will not allow virus to go to the normal cell, but it will direct the virus to go to the cancer cell and do the regulated killing only to the cancer cell. So that is one approach. There are many other approaches, but this is a very simple way I'm just trying to tell you. And there are, I think 12, 13 clinical trials are going on this particular virus. So, so viruses can be used for immunotherapy as well? Correct. Okay. So immunotherapy means induce B cell response as well as T cell response. Yes, sir. It can be against cancer, it can be against inflammatory disease and all these things. Because I am personally uh, interested in immunotherapy, yeah, and I'm try uh, my preliminary work that I, we are trying is to induce TLR cells, TLR uh, receptors, uh, through mm -hmm. uh, phytochemicals or other chemicals, mm -hmm. to basically to enhance the immunotherapy in conjunction yeah. to so, other therapies. Yeah. So so far the immunotherapy uh, success rate is only fifteen percent. So you have to be careful. Okay. Uh, uh, it is working, but not in all cases. So in conjunction with other therapies? Yes. Not as, in, in, as that's, a... So yeah, so that's why you have to use uh, two, three approaches to treat cancer. One is immunotherapy. Yes, correct. Yeah. Because what is happening is that in case of cancer, there is a situation of immune cells because the immune cells find and repair the cancer cells by killing the cancer cells. But there is a phenomenon called exhaustion. So exhaustion means this, that the phyto T cells are now adjusted to, to go and kill the cancer cell. So how can you, you know, retrieve their fighting ability? How can you pull back their original effector function or effector cells? So by using a virus, we can stimulate that phenomena in the T cells, or you can bring the T cell outside and program it using a virus and, and put back to the same human 
and you know make millions of these spider cells. So that is also yes, another sir. approach we can do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are trying to do that approach as well. Yeah, yeah. So that is currently that uh, in in TAS Pharma. Where are you now? So I'm in DTU, Delhi Technological University. Okay. So the the, the Birak has funded in TAS Pharma and Artrick and a couple of people in uh, IIT Bombay. They are they are doing this. Uh, Uh, kind of human therapy uh, approach at, at the preclinical level, at the animal level, not at the human level. Uh, sir, actually, we have, we proposed a, this. This is the project that we are doing with, within conjunction to uh, AIMS Delhi, and yeah, they have yeah. proposed this project, and we haven't called it for uh, for defending it yet. But yeah. let's see. No, they, yeah, so have. this is a long way to go. At usually five five years uh, typically, because you have to do animal studies. Uh, unless you qualify the animal studies, uh, nobody is going for clinical trial. Okay. Yes, sir. So very. Okay. Yeah. so also uh, there was a proposal in in the world that uh, that all purpose vaccine will be uh, this is a uh, something that we were hoping to have a research is going on yeah. see there are there are many ways actually but what is the principle of vaccine means it will make your immune system stronger enough so that disease will be prevented right that is the, that is the basis of a vaccine okay so i work with a virus that virus name is called orf virus o r f if you google it and that is a pox virus okay and it has uh, more than 190 genes but what we have seen is that if you inject the dead virus to animals it will non specific non specifically stimulate heightened immune response that means it will provide a generalized defense system that means it will have a very quick effect on t cell repertor b cell response but it is not specific to any virus So that's why it's called non-specific. In general, your immune system will be boosted. Okay. The reason being that these are the stimulatory and co-stimulatory signals in that viruses. Okay. So as you go deeper into the immunology, you will know that when the B cell is going to be a plasma cell, they need Th1 and Th2 response. We call helper cell response. There are CTL4. Yes, sir. There are other chemokines that are required, which is bridging the gap from a you know trained B cell to a fighter plasma cell producer T cell. what if yes, we provide those signals to a large number of you know diseases conditions so that is the that is the philosophy of a universal vaccines okay but so far it has not been conceptually proven but concept is there that okay. you can provide a heightened you know immune response in your body so that in in generally it will fight to everything so it's just a concept not a not any uh, proof no, of concept no. we don't have any no no we don't have it okay thank you sir so any other questions uh, hello sir yes uh hello sir can you hear me sir uh, yes i do good afternoon sir yeah uh, uh, sir my a uh, question uh, in general in the vaccine yeah. sir uh, sir mm -hmm. as you told sir uh, vaccine i mean uh, naturally two types active and passive so mm -hmm. in the sense of immunity so already mm -hmm. we have the active immunity that means the by birth and the synthesis uh, synthetic immunity that means the we can help uh, to the uh, uh, like fruit and vegetable and vitamins then sir it uh, build in the our body sir mm -hmm. uh, sir my question is that sir in case our uh, immunity system uh, by birth uh, means uh, active and strong mm -hmm. then can mm -hmm. uh, need the uh, vaccine uh, sir to the any disease so, or so, viruses sir uh, so i will i will divide your question to three four segments okay for example in the birth the immunity is because our mother gave it not your father okay your mother gave the plas you know uh, placental through it it passed igg and iga to you that's why you got the immunity okay and we know that blood cells the longevity is about 120 days roughly that means whatever we got from the mother will disappear in due course of time maybe 5 7 months maximum after that that effect is gone then how you will develop that thing how does your mother develop that one okay mother must have developed that is passing to you okay so so when you are getting out of the breast milk as well as the placental circulation your immunity is falling down from the day one and you need to boost it back to the normal how you boost it so that two ways you can boost it by stimulating it or by acquiring it you cannot acquire you can acquire by collecting the blood from somebody and inject yourself which is not theoretically possible but by stimulating it 
and to stimulate you need to increase the thymus activity and splenetic activity so that's why the t cell if you remember the t means thymus cells okay so for that you need a you need a situation where you are challenged by some stimulation suppose suppose if you don't teach a child properly how to write a b c d g uh, thing then she cannot you know write a word after 10 years even she become 20 years old so if you do not teach a b c d it will write any word right so these are the basic blocks of a immune activation okay and we need to stimulate that minimum thing whether we are stimulating by exercise by exposure to disease by you know doing pranayama or whatever the way what thing but you need to stimulate it otherwise it will not learn because vaccine is the process of educating your immune system unless you provide external education it will not your immune system will not learn so otherwise it will not achieve its full potential okay like a child you need to provide a correct learning resource and environment so that the child attain full potential to be a learner in the future exact same principle applies to your immune system you have to give a stimulation unless that it will not develop it is there but it is dying without any stimulation okay sir and, and it is also seen in in mouse model that if you provide very sophisticated environment without a single bacteria virus and keep the mouse for 2 years in 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 an environment which is air condition there is no dirty water is given then the mouse also do not develop the correct immune system and this is the probable reason why that we i mean it's it's a negative way i should not talk but the probable reason why we indians are always constantly challenged by our environment for very many exposure of pathogen disease all these things and in general our kind of immune system is quite broad and you know effective compared to a person which is staying in denmark for 50 years has no exposure to you know what is mold what is dirt what is air which okay so that is that is variation in the immune immune system so so for that we need to stimulate our immune system without stimulation we will not learn it okay sir and sir yeah. my, th- th- my second thought sir mm-hmm. uh, regarding sir also mm-hmm. vaccine preparation Because generally, mm-hmm. vaccine prepared uh, uh, by the activation process and and the inactive activate uh, inactivation process by the chemical. Okay, sir. Okay. Sir, yeah. suppose if the uh, if the vaccine prepared from the uh, uh, activation process, I mean, take from take the uh, live live virus or bacteria, mm-hmm. then prepared mm-hmm. it. So mm-hmm. I I have doubt, sir. When sir uh, this uh, vaccine uh, enter in the body as a parenteral mm-hmm. route. Then sir, mm-hmm. uh, it can spread in the whole body, no? So because sir, yeah, yeah. In, in this back, yes. So how? Yeah, can, is uh, a... What is the solution, sir? So that is why I am trying to tell you that. See, in a given amount of time, right? Right now, for example, you and me, we have thirty-five thousand types of bacteria inside your gut. Okay, thirty-five thousands. Okay, our body is a microbiome. Our body contains hundreds types of viruses at a time. your skin has viruses your hair has viruses your nail has bacteria everything but they don't cause disease only when some external force is challenged for example corona virus comes they cause disease the purpose of vaccination is to prevent disease not to prevent infection i am categorically telling you again okay so what we are trying to tell you that we are providing a moderate virus because some viruses some virus will cause disease some will not okay some will in between what if you choose a virus which will not cause disease but it will replicate for some time maybe one month maybe five days and will get out okay so that is the that is the situation where we call it as a attenuated virus which is live virus it is a live attenuated that means no disease causing mechanism but it will replicate to certain degree for example if you provide 100 corona viruses to a individual in 7 days that 100 will produce 100 million okay but if you provide a attenuated virus instead of making 100 million it will cause only 1 million it will grow but not to grow to the extent it will cause disease so before the disease comes the body will you know produce the immune response to it because body needs 7 to 9 days to produce the antibodies and if virus doesn't go beyond goes after that then we cannot control it but before that you know body response come the virus is eliminated because the virus is very poor in replication or attenuated or so called you know mild in, in the situation so it is better to have those kind of viruses which do not cause disease replicates to certain extent so there is no such thing called whole body okay any virus 
has any virus, you pick any virus, it has a very specific organ to grow. It does not grow in the whole body. For example, coronavirus does not grow in your brain or rabies virus does not grow in the skin. It has to go to the brain. Yes, the yes. hippocampus of the brain, it is grow. Hepatitis virus will not grow in your, in your intestine, it will grow in the liver. Okay, so like that. So it has its own you know, mechanism, it has its own receptor, it has its own organ specific. So, so looking at those biology, the, the great example is your pulse polio, which is a Sabine strain of polio. That virus will only grow inside the intestine. But you know that polio is your nerve cell is affected. Like that's why you, somebody cannot able to make the muscles properly, cannot work properly because the nerve is damaged. But that particular virus has lost the ability to grow inside the nerve, rather grow inside the intestine. While it is growing in intestine, it will stimulate the immune system and get out. Yes, so that kind of that kind of thing is your attenuated virus. So that is the holy grail. If you find the attenuated virus for coronavirus now, in overnight, I guarantee you will be billionaire. And people could not find for the HIV for the entire 35 years of history. But people found it for, for you know, uh, smallpox, they found it. For polio, they found it. For hepatitis delta, they found it. But nobody's found it from Ebola or from HIV, not for corona so far. Oh, okay, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So we have question? also yeah. read about mm -hmm. uh, VDG gene rearrangement mm -hmm. during the antibody production. Correct. So does that uh, effect when we are recombination uh, when we are reverse transcripting the uh, from protein to DNA mm -hmm. in the process of vaccination mm -hmm. vaccine formation? Mm -hmm. So the question is here. So if we are, are touching the immunology, I need to go also talk one important uh, called the germinal center reaction. Okay, which is happening in the spleen and the lymphoid organs. Okay, what is the germinal center reaction is that, so inside the spleen, for example, there is a center or a nucleus or a particular focus where the B cells are engaged with the T cells. And by the help of the TH response, the B cells are going for VDJ recombination as well as they're differentiating into very many types of plasma cells. Okay, that is not cell which I'm generalizing it. What is the essential factor for there is that there is an antigen presentation happening. Okay. Okay. So the so antigen presentation means a protein is presented. So whether you use Moderna vaccine, which is your mRNA, or kill vaccine, which is your co-vaccine from Bharat Biotech, or adenovirus induced spike protein by the Chadox vaccine, ultimately everybody is producing or providing the spike protein. Understand? So the so we are not interfering with the antigen processing mechanism. Because ultimately, vaccine has to be antigenically presented so that the germinal center reaction happens. The B cell go for recombination by somatic hypermutation and B DJ combination. Then there will be thing. So, so that part we are not touching it. We are only touching how we can provide the spike protein in a means so that the antigen presenting cell, such as macrophages, dendritic cells, ranglion cells, will present those proteins to the T cells and B cell. Okay. So our limitation is before that, that is not in our control. That BDJ recombination or the things is not in our control. It is not affected you know, largely by what form of the antigen mechanism you are providing, whether you are providing a you know, mRNA or uh, adeno or something, because at the end, their antigen presence should be intact. If it is not in... Am I audible, guys? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay. He has some internet issues. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. He lost it. Let's wait if we can join or otherwise we'll land here.
Hello, I'm sorry. I think there was some. Uh, yes, yes. I'm sorry about uh, that uh, internet. Some problem in my end. No problem. I think uh, we have uh, consumed more than a uh, lot of time. Uh, yeah, yeah. So there are a uh, few questions in chat box if you want to take or to take. Ah, uh, sure. I can talk. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to the chat box, but you can ask questions now. I, I'm I'm okay. That's a new word. So I'm, I'm opening the chat box. Yes, uh, uh, students, uh, you have any questions? I think uh, Dr. Mega is uh, talking about any specific question. Uh, uh, we are talking about the VDJ recombination as well as the antigen presentation, which is uh, one step before the VDJ recombination. And one step before is that uh, providing the antigen. So how you are providing antigen is by mRNA making protein or protein itself or adenovirus making protein. Those are three different ways. So what is impacting is that the antigen presenting efficiency is being impacted. Okay. To overcome that, the Moderna is providing like a million of RNA virus, RNA copies, and uh, Chadox is providing 10,000 viruses, or Bharat Biotech is providing 1 million of you know, things so that the there is certain degree of antigen presentation is you know remain. Uh, otherwise, without antigen presentation, there is no such um, T cell maturation as B cell maturation is happening. So we have to uh, very clear about that antigen presentation happening, and that is in already tested in the preclinical study. Okay, so which is in animal model, is mouse model as well as monkey model. So don't worry about that. Uh, okay, sir. thank you, sir. Excuse me, sir. Yes, Maria. Uh, sir, recently I read in the news that the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine will provide mm -hmm. immunity for at least three months. So mm -hmm. what will be the pattern of dosage? Because it is said that it will provide immunity for at least three months. So what after that? So that uh, means that it can provide also beyond three months, theoretically. So what I'm trying to tell you is that this particular virus in the human history of known literature is not more than one year. Okay. And for any clinical trial, we need to acquire the data up to two years. Okay. Because of the modern pandemic situation, okay, whatever the first clinical phase two trial was there, the data is only three months old. Each month we are collecting the, so whatever, what is happening is that we are injecting the person with the Moderna vaccine and every month we are collecting the serum and looking for what is the milligram or, or quantity of IgG present? Okay. IP, the, there is a, we, we call it a titer. Okay. And there is a cutoff value. If the, if the titer is lower, the person is protected, not protected. If the titer is high, if the quantity of antibody remain high, then it is protected. So if the quantity of antibody remain high for a long time, we call it is immune response. Okay. Or, or, or memory response. So, so far we know that only three months the, the phase three trial started only three months. That data is only three months. Maybe after after one month, the model will tell that we can protect you minimum four months. And after two years, we'll know the entire story. So it is all evolving. Okay. And in that situation, if in the three months, we, we supposedly in three months, we completely covered the entire population and we wiped out the virus. So we reduce the pandemic to a endemic. So there is no more pandemic. And, and once the virus is gone from the public life, then it will be restricted. So the global community is making a couple of ways to you know, try to contain the virus. The problem is pandemic. Pandemic is everywhere the virus is. Pan means everywhere the virus is. How to reduce to endemic and how to completely eradicate. So any virus has a long history of eradication. It takes hundreds of years to eradicate a virus. Okay. So in modern technology, you can make it in a few years, but not in three months. 
But what is that? This is the best available option among the situation. So this is the only option we can say that whatever the vaccine, they have only three months old. So we don't know what is happening after that. Thank you, sir. So any other questions? So if no questions, uh, we can uh, stop it here. Yes. And, uh, uh, I say, yeah. There is, uh, there are two, three questions, but I'll uh, read last question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, some oncolytic vectors are being used as a cancer vaccines. What if these vectors lead to the lysis of, of infected host cell due to the gene expression for shorter duration or due to side effects of some other drugs? Does it affect the host immune system? Uh, yes, to a certain degree it would affect. But again, the, the situation is that uh, we have to look at the cost-benefit ratio, for example. If I, if I kill my cancer, but I'm allergic to P not will not be acceptable to me. So that is the exact question we have to take a decision. That's why the the modern uh, way of uh, doing uh, therapy is called personalized therapy. So we have to look at the immune status of the person. What is the collective amount of IgG present in the serum of an individual? What is the stage of the cancer? Okay. What is the probability that cancer will not return or return? Okay. Because depending on the various stages, we can take a prognostic view. Okay, so we have to analyze the cost benefit ratio. Okay, of course there will be immune response. Okay, to a particular vector. So, so if you use one vector, it will kill the cells, but that vector will be immune. That vector will body will react if you use second time. But you can use another vector. There are there are many ways we can change the vector several times. So repeatedly you can use it. So that means you can bypass the immune resistance by changing the vector but keeping the gene. So that there are different approaches. Also, if you know that uh, when there is a so-called uh, kidney transplantation or something, we are providing you immunorepressive drugs for even cyclosporine. Okay. Because your organ will be rejected. So we have to condition in a such way that because that is a modern uh, you know, medical th you know, approach is that we can condition body to such a way that we can receive it to certain drugs more effectively. So we can create a situation around it. So by providing an environment, we can temporarily reduce the immune activation or immunosuppression and effectively kill the cells. And once the cells are killed, you increase the immune system to a higher level. Thank you, sir. OK. Um, so I think students, uh, we took a lot of time for the discussion. And if you have uh, still uh, questions, then you can uh, mail me or you can you know, drop down in WhatsApp group or you can directly contact uh, a professor. Yeah, you... yeah you can uh, contact me and uh, you can ask now also. I'm OK. It's not easy. It's a very interesting group, uh, very enthusiastic group, uh, young people. So what I want to you know appeal to our young people is that you make a focus to turn something on in your life so that no matter what you do, it will be eventually benefit to the larger amount of society. And as a country, we need a lot of things to do, do the you know, so-called experiment within our community. We cannot rely that you know, always a Sputnik will come from Russia or Chadax will come from you know, Britain. There are many diseases. For example, I'm working in a virus. It's called Casanur Forest Disease Virus. So anybody is from Karnataka will know there is a Kashmir is a forest, okay, and there is a virus, and that virus is deadlier than coronavirus, okay. It is a top ten global virus, okay, and there is no vaccine to that virus. Unfortunately, that virus doesn't present outside India. That means nobody is worried in UK or you know USA to look for the disease. What is happening in India? Okay, Nipah is another example virus. So there are many similar. There are many types of cancer. There are many types of disease. which is very India specific, and and there is a lot of technology available. All you have to use the technology in a different context. That whether you have to use it for Corona vaccine or you have to use for Casanova vaccine, the approach and principle is same. So I appeal to the young people 
that whether it is immunotherapy or cancer therapy or oncologic therapy or vaccine development or gene therapy or anything else because the modern biotechnology is so so precise as well as so focused that we can achieve a good amount of thing subject to you dedicate you know 10 years of life on that it will not happen overnight those who produced you know corona vaccine in, in uk that guy has 23 years of you know viral vector you know design similarly the person who made the moderna vaccine the poland guy who was jewish in in the you know germany he started in 1973 that mrna vaccine now it is coming to the effect so so you have to understand that you know the time gap between the laboratory research versus translational research and to to a field application is 10 to 20 years okay and we should not lose a patience but we need to start somewhere so this is the right time that you guys you know go for a higher study anywhere in institute in india or elsewhere come back to the in lab do pick up a issue however small or big doesn't matter go to the you know, bottom of it make five solution out of it look whatever the society believes is right and they will pay you price don't worry about it there's so much a problem we have if we don't do nobody will, you know else will do for us we cannot depend that's what i'm trying to tell you we cannot depend corona is a, is a example that how poor you are fortunately the information is you know free had the information was tight we could not have done anything in terms of you know genome sequence in antibody sequence this that at least everything is available now but many country restrict this information for example our neighboring country restricted the genomic information for long amount of time had the genomic information released properly we could have developed the monoclonal antibody two months before or maybe vaccine three months before so that is the modern uh, you know economic or the fighting between the countries at the modern uh, world is heading so we need to be equip ourselves in biotechnology uh, so guys uh, and as professor mentioned there is long way to go uh, and uh, there is so many things to do so uh, if you if you have to widen your thoughts and uh, you know the ideas so uh, i hope uh, there are no more queries students no ma'am thank you okay so i'll provide a email id sir with your permission uh, so yes, if please. you have any uh, idea or any sort of project whatever they are doing they need guidance or support they can uh, mail you and uh, uh, it was really informative and uh, really interesting uh, presentation sir and uh, we are really uh, happy to uh, hear from you and we are always look forward for your support and guidance in such future workshop and um, i i know uh, this people uh, the students at this age getting this much information from uh, you know very distinguished faculty like you so they'll get benefit somewhere so um, yeah that, that's all sir and uh, really thankful to you for yeah thank you yeah thank you uh, dr mega and uh, thank you all the students for attending peacefully for 2 hours you know <laughs> this was exemplary okay thank you all uh, for your you know attention thank you thank you sir 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 yeah thank you okay, okay guys so uh we have uh we had the next session on uh, portable biosensing devices for point of care diagnosis which is uh, cancelled by the uh, faculty so we don't have session now uh, but tomorrow we have session as per the schedule uh, so please join there uh, on time and right now if you have any question you can ask me otherwise we can end here and i'll uh, send the email id of uh, professor naik in uh, whatsapp group yes ma'am please okay, okay ma'am ma thank you ma'am thank you ma'am thank you ma'am thank you ma'am okay